Over the past three years, our crew have made several attempts working with Ronnie Morgan to push a road out to King George Falls in the Kimberley. But we hit roadblocks every single time. Roadblocks in the form of broken diff locks, snapped axles, multiple sheared steering arms, ruptured brake lines, as well as ruptured fuel lines. It's one of the diesel cooler lines coming back to the cooler. Then on top of that, we'd been stopped by impossible terrain. The 2020 lockdown flowed into 21, and the moment the WA border was open, we made an insanely quick dash for the Kimberley region of Western Australia. As quick as it was, we couldn't avoid quarantine and the associated COVID testing that comes with that. And looking at this footage, if you've had this test done, you can relate to what you're seeing right now. cyclone also forced us to spend extra time testing our gear in the back box of Wyndham, which proved handy to weed out the wink links in our attack. And the Coburn Ranges is a spectacular backdrop to do so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're welcome. <laughs> looking for, 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 okay. uh, there was a killer earlier. Hey, one killer bull earlier. Oh, With a crew of familiar faces assembled, the decision was made to fly over the Umbulgari Balangara country first to see if the cyclone had washed away all our plans to start the push out to King George Falls. Although the rivers were up, Ronnie felt the country would welcome us on this attempt. With five land cruisers, one Ford Ranger and two quad bikes, the stage was set to push for the northern axis of the Umbi track via the Carson River station. Yeah. 
Ronnie is in his favourite spot as team leader and will be out front testing the waters first. Crossings are way too high for the quad bikes and we've opted for no trailers on this trip to preserve the tracks because we want to look after them. So each quad would need to be towed across the rivers. will play an integral role later in this trip, so both BJ and Ad didn't mind clicking up the extra Ks to bring them along. The next major hurdle was the Jurak that turned out to be a lot deeper than the local council had advised us. <laughs> Deep, yes, but flowing slowly. The decision was made to push through. Oh yeah, 
yeah, she's getting a little high. Front's floating, it's okay, but... I think my bottom is just getting wet. Trying to cool Ruby's feet down. That's okay. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, just a little splash. Yep. I was going to say it sounds like my cruiser. <laughs> no water inside? Just a little bit. A camp on the western bank of the Jurak saw day one come to a close. I know, yeah, yeah. Right, food was hard. Yeah. Day two started with BJ and Ad setting the pace out front on the quads. Progress hit an abrupt halt when Ronnie's new cruiser collapsed a rear wheel bearing, destroying a rear axle in the process. What a mess. It could be any one of us. It doesn't matter how That's prepared right. your car is, things break. Yep. It looks like Ronnie might have done a back diff. Well, the boys are working on it. See if we can make him into two-wheel drive. Poor oh, Ronnie. There we go. Oh, they yeah, just pop out. But I think it's been silicon duck. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Cool. Probably yeah, the bottom one, that's, one. Yeah. that's not oil. That's a water. That's water. Yeah. Uh, that definitely is water. Is. I wonder if he's roughing there. Got those new bearings that run on water. Yeah. <laughs> water cooled. Mate. Water cooled. Water cooled bearings. There you go. Pulling me. G'day, Aaron. Here we are, out in the middle of nowhere, mate. How's your holiday? G'day, mate. I'm having the most fabulous time. This is Aaron Park, ABC Regional News. At the moment, I'm watching a man bending over, making loud cracking noises. <laughs> Gotta be bending over. <laughs> and what sort, of, what sort of crack would you say that is? <laughs> it is a fine outback crack. The finest Kimberley specimen you will ever find. Would you say it's a little hairy crack? Maybe we need to go closer and find out. Let's get in there. The beauty of travelling in a group is that between ourselves we had all the parts to replace the broken axle and collapsed wheel bearings, allowing Ronnie to continue on. As the full extent of the cyclone's damage had not yet been inspected, several detours had to be made to bypass the larger washouts along the track. Go a wheel with 
left over. So put yours in the middle so you're not chewing up that it's turning the liquid underneath you. And you really don't want to back off any. Uh, yeah, put your put your driver's wheel in the middle of that and come over this way, son. Yeah. Up a goal, Jeffy. <laughs> you in luck? <laughs> just reached the Drysdale River and you can see in the background there Ronnie is having a crack at getting up the crossing. It's like a, a double crossing. We've got water on both sides and a big sandbank in the middle and the water's not too deep. It's a sandbank that's is the challenge. The boys have dug it away a bit with all their um, spades and shovels and things and if you can get one car across that's half the battle the others should follow. Not too well. Stand up. Although shallower than other crossings, the flow through here was questionable again for the quads. But prepping them for the tow was now a quick procedure. We had that down pat. Getting closer to the coast, the path of the cyclone became more apparent with more of this country still underwater. When it comes to tackling fast flowing rivers, the Carson is at the top of our list. But once again, Ronnie forged the way, diving in first. Beautiful day here, nice and sunny. Ready for the deep stuff. After three days, we had only covered what we would normally travel in one day. And we are still yet to hit the proper wet country. Tune in for part two next time, where the winters and recovery gear get pushed to their breaking point. <laughs>